Welcome back to the interview, and I have a repeat guest. I think he's the only second second repeat guest I've ever had, Leonard Anderson. He, You might remember him. He was the guy who was trying to organize a screening of the Red Pill at Western Sydney University, which was subsequently cancelled. So how you going there, Leonard? Very good, mate. How's, how's things? Good, good, good. So when we last left off, the, um, the WSU screening of the Red Pill had been canned, um, no, no official mm-hmm. explanation had been given. So, could you give us an update on have you had any subsequent communications with the administrators, and do you intend on trying to get another screening up and up and running? Well, uh, we've attempted to contact the uh, people responsible for canning the screening, and we've had no replies whatsoever. So, hmm. uh, myself, I've sent away numerous emails. My our two IC second in command sent away emails, and we've we've got no reply whatsoever. Mm-hmm. So the the promise that I made to everybody was that uh, we will have our petition open until we can give people a straightforward answer as to why the event was cancelled. Mm-hmm. Um, we we do have plans for a, another event, but due to the fact that our university is just being hush hush with us at the moment, we have to keep this new event under wraps. Mm -hmm. So the whole idea of this event will be to invite a small number of people in a secret location, secret time, dates that uh, have a fair amount of social reach. So Mm -hmm. social commentators such as yourself, uh, certain members from men's rights uh, organizations from around Sydney and uh, from the mainstream media that have, have shown a lot of interest in it to come along to watch the film yep. and to give their honest opinions uh, having watched the film instead of just relying on all these articles just blasting at the film for being misogynistic and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Well, that's a good idea. Um, oh, yeah, if you're willing yep. to fly me down, I'm willing to be a special guest and uh, write up my review. But um, Are you, You're up in Queensland, aren't you? Yeah. Yep. You, yep. Yep. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. If you're willing to come down, no problem. We can set you up on on uni. We have uh, accommodation on uni. That's that's fairly cheap. So, <laughs> geez, we have to look at. Yeah, I was actually just planning. I think um, the international men's conference in May or June this year. I, th- I, oh, was, okay. I was going to wait yeah. and just watch that because that's right here on the Gold Coast, which is where I am. Um, oh, nice. Because I, I, I do know the. The film is going to be on sale uh, at around March, I mm-hmm. believe. That's what Cassie J's been advertising. Yeah, yeah. So we wanted to have at least one uh, screening before that happens. And then after after this secret screening, we will attempt to try to have a more public one again. Yeah. So yeah. The, the difficult part is just having a location and just uh, just bringing people on just to watch the film. You know, yeah, it's it's incredibly difficult because most people haven't seen it yet, and uh, they want to know about it. But then they start reading all these online sources, and they get scared, and they just <laughs> they just can it. So and they just get all these floods of complaints, and mm. it's uh, it just goes downhill really quickly. So it's hilarious, though. I mean, if if you just watch the extended trailer, for example, um, mm. of, of the film, I mean. There's nothing in there that you could possibly point to and go, oh, my God, this this is potentially uh, horrendously dangerous or offensive to anyone. I mean, anyone watching that trailer would have to think, oh, yeah, okay, you've got two sides here. You've got men's rights activists talking about stuff. You've got feminists. You're going to get a balance. It, you know, mm. it's done by a feminist. It's uh, On the surface, at least, it looks as though it is fairly balanced. What's going to happen if you go there and you find out that it's, oh, it's actually biased in one way? What are you, what are you going to die? Are you going to, you're going to have a heart attack yeah, exactly. or you're going to go into a <laughs> coma of depression or anxiety? I mean, the 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 hysteria yeah. around this is just unbelievable. I did a video a few days back about um, um, what happened down in Melbourne on the Boxing Day 1 where they threatened to key the guy's car and just all kinds of fucking insane yeah yeah i read about that stuff it's and insane isn't it i mean how insane is it that the brisbane screening has to basically plan all these logistics underground not giving out the location until the actual day 
just so they can get yeah. this scene. I mean, where do we live? Do we live in well, like <laughs> East Germany or what is it? Is this yeah. communism? It, well, so far, what what have we had? We've had three attempts, um, and two failed, and three different types of attempts on their second attempt or first being the Brisbane one, mm. having to run this underground just to show it. Yeah. And that's that's pretty crazy in a country like Australia. So yeah, it's it's yeah. it's completely stunning. We've lost uh, any idea of what uh, free speech is. I mean, and who you know, exactly. let's who cares if it is offensive? So what? I mean, even even the guy in Melbourne who said I watched the I watched the film first and it doesn't promote violence against women. Um, mm. So what if it did? I mean, how many how many movies have violence against men? You know, how many of them do mm. that? It's we just we live in this uh, like perpetually uh, hysterical state that some woman might get injured because someone said of something offensive, or you know someone's heard a joke and going to run home and beat his yeah. wife. You know, somehow t- telling a joke where a woman is the butt of it would actually lead someone to go home and beat his wife. It's just it's a it's a well, climate of hysteria. The, there are people out there that actually do believe that type of stuff, which is amazing, you know. Yeah. But what what, uh, what what boggles my mind is if if this film confirms everyone's greatest fears, then what's the point of of shutting down all these events? If this will be the greatest recruiting tool for SJWs or feminists against yeah. the men's rights organisation? Well, you know? they they know what it they know what it means at heart. A lot of them, I'm, I'm sure, there's probably feminists that just support banning it because and because they're idiots who just believe they're leaders but the, the leaders know very well that this stuff is just going to fuck with their narrative as women as victims oh, and, and that's why they're Absolutely. doing it they're not stupid enough to well, not well, see that well when I first got the, the DVD I watched it uh, with my 2IC mm. and probably about 80% of everything on this film I was very familiar with but it still blew my mind I mean mm. it's very well put together and I can't imagine the 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 awakening that somebody would have never having heard any of this stuff before mm. and just watching this it, it, it is going to blow people's minds it yeah. really does i, I got to say i'm so, not that i'm personally not that interested in seeing it because i think i'm familiar with probably 95% of the arguments oh, in yeah. the film it, it's about yeah. Um, getting it out to people who don't like. Uh, to, it, yeah. I mean, the, the hysteria around it is more interesting to me than the actual documentary. But as you say, it's getting yeah, it to the it, people who who aren't familiar with the issues. It's it's definitely it definitely will be a game changer. My group and myself in particular, we're, we're just interested in people watching it. Mm. We're, we're not we're, we don't want to we don't want to drum ideology down people's throats or tell people how to think or anything like that no. you know if if they come along to any of our events and they they want to debate us on anything we're, we're fine perfectly fine with any of that type of stuff mm-hmm. in fact our, our original our original event plan was to have people come along on a and a board that uh, would speak against this film mm-hmm. potentially yeah so so a great many people can uh, can hear the other side so yeah well but some yeah. people just aren't. Go. Some people just aren't interested in that uh, idea that you would have a back and forth and that you can disagree on something respectfully. No, mm. you all have to think the same way. But um, all right, so you've given us what the new event's going to look like, um, but you have to keep the details sound. So we'll probably hear more about it later. Let's move on to um, yes. the campus lunacy that you're encountering because it's good to get these pers- yep. perspectives from people who are actually on university campuses and we don't hear that much yep. what's going on in australia quite frankly compared yeah. to most of north america yeah. yeah north america some in the uk but um just explain your position because you're on a on a campus council and then sure so yeah. As, yeah, as, as well as running my social group on the side, I'm uh, one of the councillors on the Bankstown Campus Council, and uh, my primary position is the residential representative, so being that I live on campus and everything. Mm. Uh, on the side, wait, one wait of a my minute, wait, sort of secondary... Wait, 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 so yep. just on that, like, resident, what does that mean? Basically, someone has a problem with their campus accommodation and you're supposed to do something about it, like, or... 
Yeah, well, basically, I'm I'm there to to be um, a sort of a go between between the university or the uh, the company that runs the the residence here here at uh, Bankstown. Yeah. And if they have a problem, they can see me directly or anyone else on the council, and uh, I'm basically their sort of uh, residential champion, I guess. Yep. Got it. And, and uh, so, apart from Apart from my primary responsibility, I also hold what we call portfolios, and they're sort of like these special interests. So I've got the portfolio of freedom of speech and expression, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this was pretty much day one when I sat on the uh, the, the council. We we're doing all these intros. You know, this is what the council does, and we also have these special little interest projects, and mm-hmm. that you could take up, and they're called portfolios. It's basically just another way of saying minister for health and minister for education, that right. type of thing. Yep. And so I put my hand up and said, "Oh, uh, I'll take uh, freedom of speech and expression, please." Mm-hmm. <laughs> so this wasn't this wasn't something that was actually available. This is just something you you can nominate a portfolio. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. So this is brand new. So yep. Some of the other things have been the, like portfolio and food and or health or environmental issues, that type of stuff, you yep. know? Yep. And uh, you have to be elected into these types of things. So um, everyone put their hand up and said, yeah, you can have it because, you know, they didn't know me yep. and they didn't know exactly what I had planned. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, so the whole idea with that was during that time, my group, was still uh, disabled, suspended, mm. and I had no other way of of bringing in these controversial groups and or individuals on a campus and having these debates and Q and As and all sorts of stuff like that. Yep. So part of the reason why I joined the council was to uh, see if I can push them through the student council and then bring them on um, and uh, try my luck. Yep. Uh, unfortunately, I wasn't all that successful. So, basically, they were just another, um, uh, I guess, roadblock to get through. It, it yeah. probably would have been easier to sort of try to bring them in through my social group uh, as opposed to the ca- uh, the student campus council. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that was part of the plan. The other, the other, the other reason why I joined the council itself was to get a bit of a general idea of the uh, the atmosphere around this whole social justice thing, feminism, crazy political correctness scene on, on campuses yep. that we've been uh, seeing a lot of. And I, I, I get this question all, a lot through uh, people that just email me or send me messages through Facebook. They say, oh, what's it like on, on these campuses? And I said, well, in the beginning, I'd, I'd, I'd say, well, I'm not too sure. You know, I see signs of it. Yep. So I, uh, I figured, well... A lot of these people tend to gravitate towards power and responsibility, and and if they're going to go anywhere on the uni and sort of dictate policy, mm. the council, the student campus council, would be the perfect place to start. Yeah. So I thought, okay, I'll I'll sign up and everything, and and see how we go. Yeah. And um, to this day, I, I still haven't been successful in passing any type of motion whatsoever. <laughs> how many of All you? How many have you put through? How many have you put up? Well, geez, it's hard to say now. Uh, I've been at it for about a year, yeah. um, around the ballpark, around about uh, fifteen, maybe twenty type of things. <laughs> Not so, and, and they they range. F- no, so some of the ideas that I've put forward and some of the motions that I've I've, I've put up center around uh, trying to overturn the blanket smoking ban on campus. Mm-hmm. I try to bring back the smoking areas. Yep. Um, because once they once they they had the blanket ban across all the, all the um, uh, Western City campuses. We had a bit of a litter problem because what they did, they took away all the smoking bins and the, and the, the uh, smoking areas, mm. but people were still going to these areas, smoking and throwing their butts on the ground. <laughs> so there was a huge, big litter problem. So I thought, well, if these areas are away from everyone else and are outside, they're not hurting anybody. Yeah. So why don't we just bring them back? Because we've got we've got these cigarette buds everywhere. So that was one of the the, the issues that I tried to, to to put forth, and that was knocked back. What about um, do um, what they do I in try- Japan, which is um, um, they make enclosed areas. So you have to go in like an enclosed area and have a smoke. <laughs> like it, it's a little door. It's like a little sliding door. You yeah. go in, closes behind you. You smoke, and you can sit in there and bathe in the smoke with everybody else. 
and um, you can come out. That's a good idea. That's a, that's, that's a real cheap way of uh, not smoking yeah. if, you, if you're addicted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Breathing that awesome secondhand smoke. <laughs> so, yeah, Japan. Japan has those um, on railway platforms. Uh, so, oh, okay, yeah. well, I have to look into that. It's, yeah. it sounds rather interesting. Yep. So, what one of the more crazy recent uh, things that I tried to put forth to the council was a speed dating event. Oh yeah. And so I, I thought this would be fun. This is sort of more towards the later part of the 2015, and we'll just come. We'll just coming up with ideas i thought well how's everyone with the speed dating event because we've never had one we've had speed friending events oh. where it's basically <laughs> yeah uh, so, so, so the same principle everyone just goes around and just swaps every five minutes and go and shakes everyone's hand and say hey i'm this person and blah 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 blah, blah and you know it's, it's very g-rated and Is, isn't know, that um isn't that sort of enforcing patriarchy shaking hands it's kind of aggressive isn't it could trigger some people. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll bring that up next time they have a speed dating event. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, we've never had a speed dating event on campus. And uh, so I put the word out and it was, at the start, it was kind of well received mm. by everybody on, on council. And uh, when I tried to officially put forth the motion, um, it was actually a bit of a half-half split with the, with the other councillors. Mm. Um but then the chairman decided he had the last vote, so he knocked it back. But the, the main problem was that it wasn't inclusive enough. Ooh. So, <laughs> yeah, that was ridiculous. I, I mean, I, I told him, look, I mean, when I first told the, the, the chancellor the idea, he, he even said to me, look, because um, I, 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 I said, look, I want to put this speed any event on, yeah. but I know we have LBGT people on campus, so I have no problem in either having a separate event on a separate day, mm. separate time, or having two different types of events in the same place. Yeah, it, it's all too easy. Yep. And he said, he, he, he said to me, look, um, you know, we probably don't have too many LBGT people on campus. It's probably not going to be. It's going it's to be too much of an effort organizing it for them. And I said, um, well, okay. Yeah, yeah, literally what he said. And, 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 and this, and this councillor, he's gay himself. So our chairman is gay. So this is coming from a gay guy. And uh, I said, well, okay, well, I don't mind. But if that's the case, then, okay, well, I'll look into it. And then we'll see if it's worth our while. Mm. And so, um, you know, a couple of weeks went by, I, and then I officially put forth the motion, and then all of a sudden they had this huge problem with it, mm. a, a particular him. He's like, oh, well, that's not inclusive enough, and right. we, we can't do that. You know, well, what happens if I go along to this event, and, I, and then, then uh, I go around, and, uh, and then I'm sitting next to this big, beefy guy, you know, beef, big guy. Uh, jock and he wants to beat me up and i said <laughs> well okay well first it's you know western sydney university you know relax yeah. um we can have security at this event if you if it's deemed necessary which i, I doubt hmm. and you know but for, but most importantly if you don't want to come along to this event you don't have to come along yes no one's making you and yeah, but this whole inclusive excuse was complete crap because we've had so many other events which are women only, yeah. which are LBGT only, and I brought this up and they just didn't acknowledge it. You know, they just ignored it straight well, off the well, bat. See, this oh, this is you know it's the ultimate hypocrisy, isn't it? So I mean, at the end of the day, what if you add up gay, bi, transgender? You're talking about, I think, far four. I saw, I saw a Pew Research survey. It said something like four percent of the entire population. If you put all those groups into one, um, yeah. I don't care. Let's call it five. So, um, yeah. you know, you you can't hold an event unless it includes a hundred percent of people. But as you said, you can have an LBGQT event which excludes ninety five percent of the population. That's fine. That's apparently inclusive. Yeah. You can have a women's event, which obviously <laughs> excludes yeah. at least half the population, or maybe on university yeah. it's only 40% of the population, but um, that's fine. But because it's something that yeah. uh, heterosexual male organized, I mean, what, what is the... So are you saying you brought this up and the, the response is yep. a non-response, or is it because I know what the response would be in some other places, which is, well... 
heterosexuals aren't a marginalised group, right? In other words, they're not a protected mm. class who deserve special privileges. That would be the argument. But you're saying they didn't yep. even they didn't even acknowledge the fact that there's events for uh, minority groups, if you like. No, no. And I, I brought that up. I said, well, we've had these events where it's been women only. Yeah. And we've sent other counsellors off campus to these events and we've reported back and um nowza i think it's nowza was one of them and that's that's women only yep uh I, it's it's an acronym I, I can't remember what the acronym stands well, for now, now but it's definitely women only now in women now in america is national organization of women so what is it N O N O W S A. is that what you're saying yeah i, th I think that's how the acronym is yeah, uh goes sure. but uh after yeah, I, I, I think it's pronounced Nowza. Mm. But that's that's women only. And I actually put my hand up for that. And I said, look, uh, can I go even though it's women only? And I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> and I said, uh, what happens if I identify as a woman? <laughs> and um, yeah, uh, unironically, they looked at me and really seriously and they said, do you identify as a woman? <laughs> uh, but that was serious. That was serious. You should have said so yes. It mate. was almost... You should have said yes. Because... Well, I did, but I... <laughs> I did, but I couldn't get the smirk off my face. Yeah. Well, you should have said, "Well, and, I don't uh, right yeah. now, but maybe I will next week." You know. <laughs> well, uh, have you have you heard of that story of that um, student from uh, Sydney University that took out the uh, statutory yep. declaration and stated, yep. "Yeah, well, I yeah, well, that's a definite possibility. I, I could do that." Yeah. Even though they they know me now, they they probably will knock that back, and uh, they'll have a huge problem with it. But uh, legally, I can do that. Mm. But I don't know if now it will allow me through their doors because of that. But mm. uh, who knows? I may even be the first trans woman through Nowza doors. I don't know. <laughs> if there's any tra if there's any trans trans women listening, and you you've happened to attend uh, Nowza, let us know in the comments section below. <laughs> mm, absolutely. Do you, do you, I mean, as, as yeah. someone who lives on on campus out there, do you know yep. transgender people on campus? I mean, are there any um, there? Not personally. No. I, I don't think I've met any trans person on campus. Mm. I may have, but I had no idea they were trans. Mm. Mm. Uh, I've had ex-gay ex roommates. Um, uh, I've met bisexuals. Uh, and I've met other people with other type of exotic sexualities as well. Mm. I just it just well, I doesn't think, come to mind I right now. I think uh, heterosexual but, is fast becoming an exotic uh, sexual orientation. It is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's almost it's it's used as an insult the way they use cis <laughs> cis hetero. Yes, I mean that yes, that is girl. that is a designed to be a, a, an insult. Is you you you're fucking yeah. It's it's setting it. Derogatory, isn't it? Yeah, it's queer. Really sad. Queer will end up meaning heterosexual sooner or later. That's what it'll mean. <laughs> Get... I, 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 sometimes, I sometimes wonder if all these exotic sexualities and genders have just risen for the fact that you don't want to be um, thought of as this oppressor cis class. So you just name yourself this exotic gender. So you know you're you're sort of uh, left alone. You know? <laughs> I, I think it's all you know, about it's 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 classic narcissism. A lot of it. I mean, when you look into good old attention seeking. Yeah, yeah um, not to, not just um, transgender, but when it, when you talk about gender expression, which is like Jordan Peterson said. Mm. I mean, it, you, you're essentially talking about fashion, how the way you present yourself to somebody, and um, like mm. I, I don't give I don't give a shit. I mean. Young people are always trying to discover themselves and they'll do all sorts of weird hairstyles and nose rings and blue hair and whatever the fuck else, their problem glasses. But at the end of the day, yeah. I just call them all confused. You're all confused. <laughs> um, instead of concentrating yeah, on I don't... your identity, how about just going out yeah. in the world and accomplishing something? That might give you some idea yeah. that you're... I mean, I, I don't think it's a coincidence that uh, all these people tend to be very young. No. You know, so... Uh... Let, let, let's let's sit back and see all these people as they 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 leave uni they they get a job and you know and then yeah. concentrate on the, the priorities of life you know for them at least and then let, let's let's just see if they they keep these uh these different genders and and uh, sexualities and, and whatnot so <laughs> yeah i think i think the ultimate test would be if we actually went into some kind of uh you know post-apocalyptic world where we had to actually compete for survival and uh you know go out and hunt for food i mean 
being a you know yeah. non-binary transgender attack helicopter is just not going to help you. You know, I think we, <laughs> I think we'd really yeah, exactly. revert back to nature pretty quickly. So, the um, the speed dating was knocked back, which is on the bounds of it wasn't inclusive enough because it only includes ninety five percent of the population. So, what else have you got there? Yep. That's. Uh, well, one of the things that I, before the speed dating event was, and this is more along the lines of my residential um, role, was I wanted to get something nice and simple for the residents, and that was a, a suggestion box or maybe a complaint box. Mm. And uh, it was just going to sit in our nice little common room, and uh, you can just put little suggestions or complaints anonymously, and I go and collect it all up and go and see the village manager and mm-hmm. have a bit of a talk about some of the issues, and I've done it before, so it's just going to be straightforward, you know, not, not everyone's got time to sort of contact me and see me in person or go up to the office, so I just slip a little suggestion or a complaint in the box and mm. away you go, you know? Yep. And uh, that was knocked back, that was knocked back initially, and for the reason that apparently they were afraid the keys would get lost for the box. So it was going to be locked. <laughs> and I said to them, look, uh, I, it was my suggestion. I will keep the keys. Yeah. You know, I've got a car. I've got several different, ke- I've got a pair of box uh, with keys in it. Hmm. Now I've, you know, I don't lose those randomly. So I don't know why anyone will want to lose those keys as suggestion box. I'll just keep them on the same key ring. Hmm. And so it was knocked back, and I even joked around with them. I said, oh, God, you know, do you plan on buying a house? Do you plan on buying a car? Those things come with keys. <laughs> you know, it's not actually that hard to keep keys. But what, I mean, it, it, it's, an, it's an anonymous anyway, so it's not like people could raid the box and yeah. then find out that somebody's name who wrote in a suggestion. I mean, is that, is that the Exactly. Uh, dumb. Yeah, it was just the keys. It was just a stupid little key thing. Mm. But this is where it gets really weird, and you, you'd just be shaking your head. You think, how weird can the suggestion box thing get? Well, it can get uh, weirder than this, because the the next, because we have these meetings uh, once a month. So the next month, yep. they our chairman brought up the um, suggestion box again, but he said, oh, you know what? Um, maybe we're a little bit hasty okay, let's get the suggestion box, but we'll buy three this time. Three? And I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> three, yeah. I think, well, I said, oh, I only need one, but, you know, you guys can do whatever the hell you want with the, the last two. Mm-hmm. That's fine with me. And so I thought, okay, beautiful. I'll leave it at that, and I'll chase you guys up for the, the box later on. Mm-hmm. And weeks and weeks and weeks went by. I'm sending little emails, and so I'm, I'm supposed to be chasing this up with our uh, secretary. And I'm getting attitude from it, and oh, it's just a pain in the ass. And they're giving me all these stupid excuses. And I got the same excuse after maybe about three or four months, uh, like the first one. Oh, the keys. You know, and I told him, I said, well, you wanted three boxes, and now you, you've given me the same bullshit excuse about the keys again? Mm. So, so much for that. So, yeah, it's just, it's really annoying. So what, what, I've, what I've had to do now was... I'm, I'm turning our mailbox on campus as a suggestion box. Right. So I'm, I'm putting posters all around the, the residents here and just saying, look, just go to, uh, you know, villa, blah, 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 mailbox, put your stuff in there, and I'll collect it personally so no one can touch it. That's the new suggestion box. So, yeah, this is how far I have to go. Just for these simple little things, it's just it's yeah. insane. It really is. Yeah. It's it's going to drive me to drink, and I'm a university student. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, what a, yeah. So, safe spaces. Um, got any of those happening? Oh, we have them. Yep. We we have them. We have two official safe rooms. In fact, most of the campuses at uh, Western Sydney University do have them. Mm. Uh, I think two of them don't. I believe. And one of them will be a safe space for women, and the other one will be LBGT. So the one, the two we've got, uh, I've been in the LBGT one because you know obviously I've just exposed the fact that I'm not trans, so I can't go in the woman one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've been in the LBGT one, and uh, this this video has been up on on YouTube and stuff like that. So uh, my the university got really, really angry at me for doing this. 
but it was just to go in there and just to film and just say, look, you know, most people, even on even on our campus, have no idea about these these safe rooms. Mm. So I I figured, well, why not just uh, do a bit of an advocacy type video, put the word out, and say this is what a safe room is. You know, I didn't get any thank you. I just got, oh, you weren't supposed to go in there, and you know, right, right. the usual excuse. And it's just literally war to war with uh, motivational posters. You know, if you're gay, that's okay, and all this type of stuff. Do they have a, um, they have a it's, Seinfeld it's a couple... poster in there? It's like uh, there's not not that there's oh, anything it, wrong with it. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's war to war, so there's like all these different types of memes, and you know. I was for a joke. Uh, I reckon we sh- uh, we should go back in there and just replace one half the wall with those demotivational posters and see how long they last. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, th- th- this is um, this is strikes me as like in 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 a, yeah. in a, in a oh, place it, it like Australia, uh, like that you need motivational posters to reinforce the fact that being gay is okay. I mean, if anything in Australia, there should be motivational posters for religious people that say, um, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, marriage between a man and a woman is okay, you know. Like the, if you believe that it's just between yeah. a man and a woman, well, that seems to be the predominant. Well, uh, what I thought was funny about these rooms themselves is that anyone from the LBGT acronym group would have spent a majority of their life, you know identifying these particular types of ways, going through primary school, high school, and then getting to the university level where they mm. spend maybe four or five years and then all of a sudden find the need to be in a safe space. Mm. Yeah, I mean, this university is basically one big massive safe space. Universities are. You know, I, I, mm. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm pretty close to security because I've... <laughs> because of my social group and everything and everything else. Mm. But uh, I've, I've even asked them, I said, well, when was the last incident that uh, of any type of violent uh, acts or anything like that uh, happened? And they had a bit of a think about it, and they said, oh, maybe six, seven years ago, you know, <laughs> and somebody chased another person through the campus once. So it, it is incredibly safe, particularly yeah. on this campus. Mm. Yeah. And I've asked about, I've asked about a million times, you know, what is the purpose of these rooms? Yeah. And I get... You ask a million, you ask a million different people, you get a million different types of answers. Mm. And uh, the LBGT room is basically there for people that uh, wish to, I guess, feel safe in the way they express themselves. But then, you know, most uh, most gay buys and everyone else that I've met on campus have no problem with it, and they haven't even heard of the room. But what 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 is that? <laughs> what is yeah? What does that mean? So. Um, safe expressing them. Does that mean that I can act if I'm gay? I can act flamboyantly gay or gayer than normal. Uh, what, what, what is? I, it? I, I, I guess. I, <laughs> but, but like, I mean, uh, I don't know. But you know, you know, gay people on campus who don't even know that room exists, yeah. and they don't feel oppressed for yeah, not knowing exactly. that the gay room does. No, it. no, and, and and it's funny because they hear it from me, and I'm a straight guy. Mm. You know, mm. <laughs> they have to hear it from me, and they're like, what? Like, yeah, yeah, we have a safe room for you. And like, oh, okay. But uh, but apart from, yeah. from just all these posters, there's like there's a couple of couches, there's uh, city rom plays, that type of stuff. So it's a place for them to sort of relax. Mm. They it has uh, a couple of bookshelves with um, rubber gloves, condoms, tampons. <laughs> Chocolates, lollies, chips, mm. coke, you know, so it's it's really well stocked. Yep. You know, I, I could li- I could just hide in there for a week and then come out and be <laughs> fairly healthy. Probably be, and you'd probably be gay too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, I, I don't know. The, the whole uh, yeah. but so this is this is what I always wonder and it's something that happens um we've seen happen with the transgender issue in in I don't know if you've been following the Canadian thing with Jordan Peterson how they were trying to write yes. into bill C16 that um mm. basically transgender people would be a protected group under the human rights act and that um the implications of this that is if, if you refuse to use the proper pronouns that you could actually be liable to I think it was a fine initially, um, but it could mm. result in jail down the line, I guess, if you refuse. Like people are going to garnish your wages. And, and, but at the end of it, I mean, it's very punitive at the end of the day. Um, 
But the point is, um, I always wonder what percentage of the actual transgender community want this. Mm-hmm. And it's the same as you've just brought up those gay people who don't even know that safe space exists. And they probably don't care. They probably don't need it. And what percentage yeah, no, of the LGBTQ community actually really wants this room? Like, you know, it would be really interesting. I mean, that, that maybe there's a survey yeah. you could do there <laughs> of on well, your campuses. Yeah, um, we we have a few ideas. My group has a few ideas for for surveys. So uh, yeah, we'll definitely write that down and yeah, and uh, ch- check into it. I, I wouldn't mind actually finding out just the general percentage of LBGT people on campus. Mm. Yeah. Uh, if I can, you know, so that, that'll definitely be interesting. I mean, you, you have social studies departments yeah. there. They might, they probably do surveys like that, just sort of basic statistics on yeah. know, sexual preference. Yeah. And it would just be a very, 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 very basic uh, survey and, and whatnot. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, to, I'll, I'll definitely keep you posted on that. To me, it seems debilitating that you, you would have to say these people are so anxiety-ridden that they need – a room mm. away from everybody else on the campus where only the same type of people as them um, are allowed in. What does mm-hmm. it say about those people? To me, it just says that you're weak. You're not capable of interacting with everybody else. And it doesn't actually help mm. because, I mean, I don't know how many psychologists have got to come out and say this, but they've said it repeatedly. The way you get over some type of trauma or the way you um, deal with anxiety is mm. to be exposed to it in increments. You know, like so. If you if you have a yeah. if you if you're anxious around people, then you know maybe someone says, "Look, you go to a party, and all you have to do is introduce yourself to two people, and then you can go home." And that's like mm. a milestone. But but what you don't do, what you absolutely don't do, is wall yourself off from people because mm. you're never going to get over it, whatever your problem is. This just, uh, yeah, to me, it yeah. just creates I mean, division and weakness. Yeah, I mean, it will depend on what they're using the room for. Uh, that we do have an LBGT uh, social group on campus, and I do know they go in there for meetings and stuff. Mm. But how that fits with their non-LBGT members, I'm not entirely sure because I'm actually a part of their group, their queer collective. Mm. Uh, and I was a part of the United Women's Society on campus. I think they go by a different name now, the collective Women's Collective. Yeah, Women's Collective now. <laughs> and they were using the Women's Safe Room for meetings, but they, I, I don't know, they had to change their plan because guys were signing up. But uh, I'm, I, think I, was, I think I was the first guy to be kicked out of the group anyway. So I, <laughs> I think I was the only guy at that time. So... That, that problem wouldn't have been uh, a major issue for them at, at that time. <laughs> Why'd you get kicked out of that? Why'd you get kicked out of that group? Oh, uh, it's one of the first social groups I joined up, and it was uh, before I even created the Skeptic Society. Mm. And um, a while back, I was doing a bit of research for an assignment, and I came across a very, very short article about the the uh, the collective, women's collective, yep. and I read it, and I thought, wow, this is this is complete bullshit. <laughs> Uh, you know, and it just took all of like two seconds for me to debunk. Mm. And then right at the end, I saw Western Sydney Bankstown campus and I thought, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I I joined up and, uh, you know, with the intention of uh, having these types of uh, debates and discussions, which they were advertising at the time. Yeah. Well, they weren't advertising them for very long. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so what, what, so... Kind of, what kind of discussions, like what's the topic? Oh, uh, wage gap? they would post all sorts of stuff, but yeah, the wage gap is a major talking point with a lot of these uh, gender equity groups mm, on campus. Yeah. So o- overall, I've been kicked out of three groups. Uh, I've been kicked out of the Women's Collective for being an anti-feminist because I dare criticize. I, it was either I criticized a feminist or I criticized feminist theory. I can't remember. It was a while back. Mm-hmm. So they, they kicked me out for being an anti-feminist and I joined up with a, uh, a gender equity group at the Parramatta campus. Mm. They kicked me out for being an extreme feminist, <laughs> if you can believe it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the story behind that was uh, the gender pay gap. So I had this uh, huge debate with them on the gender pay gap mm. and of course they were like, oh, women are oppressed because, oh, look at this, look at these two different numbers, mm. they have to equal, otherwise oppression. <laughs> and so I'm like, hey, guess what? 
this is these are these studies and you know this is this this and that and i don't think they were reading reading through it so i gave them something a little bit more easy to digest and i gave them one of christina hoff summer's videos yeah. <laughs> and so she introduces herself as the factual feminist yeah. and i don't think the, the people in this group considered themselves feminists but they they uh, wanted to fight for gender equality and they they were taking up a lot of the talking points of feminists. Yep. And so I, I punched in Christina Hoff Summer's video and Christina's like, oh, this is why the wage gap is bullshit. Mm-hmm. And then they, I don't know, maybe they watched a bit of it and they turned back and they kicked me out and they said, uh, they put a post up on their Facebook page saying, goodbye, goodbye, extreme feminist. And <laughs> extreme feminist. Oh, so is extreme that because they, they think that Christina Hoff Summers is an extreme feminist. Oh, I can only speculate, but uh, they, I had, that was during the time where my group was very young at the time, and I had the boyfriend of the president that runs the Gender Equity Club, he actually came back to the Facebook page mm. and started threatening to track me down on campus and it won't be too hard to find out where you live and, you know, he's throwing all these type of these types of crap out um you know i've got all screenshots for all those things and but i'm, I'm not a victim so i didn't go to the campus wait, wait, wait i just advertised he, he them was, on the he facebook he was threatening you because you actually put up a different point of view this is it yeah well he was making the argument that uh my criticisms were um hatred of women <laughs> you know in his words all i see you do is bash women and you're hating on women mm. I think what what the hell are you even talking about mm. bashing on women? Well, it, it criticisms, all right. Well, that's right. Facts are <laughs> facts are violence now. Yeah, it's just in, insane. You know, no, no facts speech, no facts speech on campus. You know, that type yeah. of crap. Get, yeah, get your <laughs> get your facts speak off our campus. Yeah, and uh, so one of the other groups was the. Um, the queer collective so even though i'm in the queer collective now it's a completely different collective the previous queer collective disbanded so it's it's sort of happened like the last years of the of the ancient roman empire you know when it's split into two different uh, empires well this is what happened to the old queer collective it's split into two different groups and you had two different leaders Mm trying to uh control everyone on, on in the groups and and uh trying to, to claim power and then just the whole thing collapsed yep so they had to re- they had to literally like rebuild from the ashes and they got a brand new queer collective now which i, I joined up but i guess no one from the old one recognizes my name enough to want to kick me out again <laughs> give it time <laughs> but uh they kicked me out yeah, they kicked me out of the last one because, uh, well, they didn't give me an explanation. They just said, oh, uh, piss off, bigot, and I'm, boom, I'm out. <laughs> well, that's all you have to do, isn't I, it? I think I, I think I left – well, I think I left a comment on a few of their pictures once. You know, they, they put some pictures up on, on Facebook, and mm. I left a couple of comments. Um, actually, no, one of their pictures was um, fat acceptance, and they had – a uh, an obese woman next to a skinny model and they said you know they'll, they'll make the whole fat acceptance thing and I, I i just ironically i said uh no well i try to present it as unironically as possible mm. and i posted a picture of uh what's his name channing tatum next to a fat guy and i said and it had an arrow up to tatum saying this is disgusting <laughs> And then the other fat guy was like, "This is beautiful." And I said, "I completely agree with you guys. Yeah. These these uh, these standards in society they're, they're monstrous." And then they kicked me out. And they called me a bigot. <laughs> <laughs> but do, yes, you can't show that we have double standards, you bigot. No, no. I mean, fat, fat accept. I'm totally on board with fat acceptance. I'm getting a lot of feed. I'm getting a lot of feedback every time I talk now. There's an there's an echo. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, I'll try to turn down my volume, see if that helps a little bit. Yeah. All right. But fat acceptance, as far go. as I'm concerned, fat acceptance is um, completely fine. Like, I accept fat people. I accept that you're fat and I don't want to go out with you and that you're <laughs> unhealthy and you need to do some exercise. That's what I accept. I totally accept That's... that. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's pretty much the range of my acceptance as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I accept your right to exist. I yeah. just think you should have to pay a shitload more for your insurance premiums because you put yourself at risk. Um, I think that's the yeah, way it should work. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, well, you, treat your body. With to me, it's all a part yeah, exactly. of the same thing, which is that what they want to do is they want to demand, like, if you're a fat woman, they basically want to demand that men find them attractive. You're not allowed to not find me attractive because I'm fat. You you have oh, to. Ex- yeah. That's what it seems. That's how it seems to me. It's like you can't discriminate. It's like well, but I can because biology, because nature, because hip yeah. hip to waist ratios that have been part of evolutionary psychology for thousands of years. That's why we can do it. Exactly. And, and and I totally, totally, totally on board with your right to be as fat as you like. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going to talk to you. Exactly. Fatty. Just face the consequences later on in life, you know. Yeah. 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 All right. What else? So, yeah. Um, we're coming up to, what have we got here? Let me, 45 minutes. So those, uh, those pin tweets. Oh, do, you want, do you want to keep on going? Or? We, yeah, the pin tweets, they weren't part of the... Um, discussion around the um the speed dating because there's a lot of talk of inclusivity here oh, yeah. is, is that what these so, pin tweets are from this girl no the, the, this was completely different so because i've brought up a lot of controversial issues and talking points on the um campus council facebook page mm. i've thrown out the idea look uh because i hold this freedom of speech expression portfolio I want to bring these controversial topics to campus and these speakers and I want to explore these issues but I want to try to do it more on the council level first get a bit of a debate going and then expose the the wider uh, campus community Mm. and so I've been posting certain stuff uh, nothing just over the top hatred bigotry that type of stuff just just controversial ideas like gender wage gap things Mm. and stuff like that and they've automatically deemed them offensive and they're, they're, they're using the excuse that uh, because there's uh, protected um, groups that uh, could be in danger of these opinions that, <laughs> that uh, I'm not allowed to offend people. And, and so my council decided to get together mm. and uh, attempt to lynch me during one of the meetings <laughs> and say, well... Uh, if you do not uh, shut up, you know, and stop offending people, because look, we've got this word of offend, offense in our little guidelines with no explanation whatsoever or whatever. And, hmm. um, you, you know, we can kick you out and all that type of crap. And I just laughed at him. I said, "Go ahead, just don't threaten me. Let's let's actually do it." You know, hmm. I want you guys to go ahead and uh... actually, you know what? I do lie. Having report me to this. Uh, special committee to investigate me was the only thing that I was successful in passing on the council. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. You uh, got something yeah. through. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, but what? Yeah, that was pretty much the only thing I, g- I meant to get through. Go back so, to all right, the so they, they started specifics on what, yeah, so, what did so they, you post that was offensive besides uh, evidence that the wage well, gap is nonsense. Uh, they, well, they they, they, made, they they mentioned a whole wide range of things, but one one particular video that they really hated, it was a, a humorous little video where it had uh, uh, Transformers and versus the uh, Autobots, and they had Megatron as a uh, trans woman. I've seen that, woman. I've seen that, yeah. Yeah, yeah that it's one? hilarious. Yeah, it's called Trans... Yeah, it's called Transformers, yeah. you know, you get it? <laughs> so... so uh, the, the beauty of that video is, you know, it's funny as hell, mm. of course. It uses humor to, to get across its uh, criticisms. But the whole point of that video was criticizing the fact that we have these so-called protected groups now mm. and we're not allowed to criticize them. And so that was played out in the, you know, good guys versus bad guys with uh, Megatron and, and Optimus Prime. Mm. And so, you know, everyone's familiar with the whole Transformers story, good versus bad. And uh, in this particular uh, little mockery episode, we see Megatron becoming trans, and all of a sudden, he, he no one can touch him. Mm-hmm. No one's allowed to do anything to him. He still wants to rule the, uh, the universe, and he still wants to, you know, kill the Autobots and stuff like that. But all of a sudden, he's trans, and now he's protected. Yep. And that was the criticism. Mm-hmm. 
mm. and so I posted that up it, it, it got it up it got no response the second time I posted up I don't think it got any responses um, because it was part of a long conversation but they they had a huge problem with that and um, um, yeah they mentioned that a few times so that was a really big talking point for them and so I tried to explain the criticism in that and I said look expression is a part of that whole freedom and you know mm-hmm. that the whole freedom thing and uh, just because it presented it in a humorous way doesn't mean it's it's attacking uh, minority groups and you know that type of thing and you may not have liked it but humor is subjective mm-hmm. you know uh and that's the way i presented it and that's and they 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 threatened to kick me off campus no no sorry they threatened to kick me off the campus council mm. and i said well why threaten me let's go for it yeah. and i said i'm going to put forth the motion to um to have this uh escalated so i can be investigated and i said uh who's gonna who's gonna second and i had a second and then everyone unanimously put their ha- uh, hand up and I thought, oh shit! The first thing I actually successfully passed, yeah. and that was to get me kicked off the frigging council. <laughs> so when uh, when will you be investigated? Well, uh, apparently I have. So I've received uh, an email a couple of weeks ago, and, that, and part of the email is actually pinned to the skeptics Twitter and Facebook account. Mm. And I've, I've crossed out the names and stuff, so you know I don't get in trouble over that. But I've left mine in there, and. Yep. And I've put the more interesting part where they've wasted people's time getting together, having a look at all these material which they don't agree with or they find offensive, only to come the, to the conclusion that it may offend people. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that's life, isn't it? That, I mean, that's it. Uh, that's what these geniuses came up anything with. Anything may oh, offend Oh, you know, these controversial things may offend people, and they literally put that mm. in there. It's just ridiculous. So, it, it literally, I'm like a maybe offender, you know? that That's my crime. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, you may or may not be offended by what I have to say. Who knows? But if you are, then, you know, have a bit of a cry about it and then get me into trouble later on. Yeah. That's just the reality of it. The idea that... So, things are actionable because people are offended is this disgrace and that's why 18c uh, the, the moment 18c if 18c gets scrapped then I don't know where these uh, university you know, campuses are going to get their sort well, of authority from uh, we've got we've got uh, 18d to protect us all so uh, <laughs> didn't protect Andrew Bolt did it no <laughs> so um yeah, there's there's more to it. So, uh, apart from the screenshot of that uh, email that I received, I also posted it on the campus Facebook page and then said, "Look, I'm a really big fan of of um, following up on these types of things and updating people. And mm. here is the result of your complaints. Nothing's going to happen. I'm, I'm a maybe offender." Uh, the whole process was one big massive waste of time congratulations <laughs> and uh, that was and then I got a massive conversation from it and that was that uh, that woman that sort of you see the, the Facebook screenshots yep. Yep. Uh, it just went on and on it must have been like a two hour conversation and uh, it was crazy her main talking point was basically there are these sensitive groups in society and opinions can be dangerous yeah. and they can be dangerous in the sense that that um, they can spur people on to committing violence against these other people if they hear these opinions from some other people so and that's the connection that this this particular person wanted to try and make or uh, you know they could uh, have somebody commit suicide unfortunately because they get depressed and so it's i don't know if it's relatively new but it's just a new thing that i've heard particularly from my campus that that opinions have literally become dangerous now yeah if they're the wrong opinions. yeah well. so and that in itself is pretty dangerous to have that uh that that precedence you know that's under under that you can justify shutting anyone up at any time you know, because oh, li- you know, lives are at stake, and mm. I mean that's serious. That's really serious. So yeah, well, there's one of the one of the, the sentences this woman wrote was that um, 
people might be challenged on core parts of their existence you know yeah core parts of their existence so no. that's just because you might be but you weren't actually questioning whether transgenders are actually real you were just saying basically by putting up that cartoon that they become sort of a protected species or a protected class yeah so w what i will do is get back to you and give you the complete conversation mm -hmm. on facebook um it's quite a lot of screen caps so i don't know if you if you want to have that to show everyone else but if you follow if you follow skeptics on Twitter and Facebook, I may actually get back to that and provide a link to all those so you can read the the whole conversation. Mm. And I wasn't making those arguments. My arguments were basically, look, instead of just putting this lid on freedom of speech and expression, let's hear people out. And if they are the if they if they have these opinions where it's just it's literally hate speech. There's nothing to criticize. They're literally getting up and saying, you know, I hate this person because they are these people. Mm. Um, then we can criticize, we can blow them out, or, you know, just bring them in on campus and just completely annihilate them. And the best part is uh, we can just advertise to the world, and that's 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 my attention. But you can't you can't get there with with just you know putting a lid on on the freedom of speech and expression because you just it doesn't uh, it doesn't create debate or conversation which which universities should be yeah you, you can't you can't grow from it you, you can't grow from it and i was bringing up examples of of um not not black lives matter but um you know rights for women and and, and blacks in america mm. um i was bringing up those examples and and stuff like that as examples and but yet she was she wasn't commenting on that mm. and she was going off on on this tangent as if I was, I was speaking against these uh, these trans or gay At people and saying, "Look, groups. let's." Yeah, exactly. And I wasn't even making these arguments. Mm. It's like, well, no, I'm not even talking about that. And I, I even gave this example recently on on the Skeptics Twitter page where I uh, stumbled across these uh, these neo Nazis, these white supremacists, and they were identifying as as such. So they they just weren't Trump supporters. They were actually white supremacists. Mm. And uh, the Holocaust deniers and everything, and they were fully admit, admitting it to it. And, you know, I kept them talking about uh, what it is that they didn't like and all that type of stuff. And uh, half of their Twitter accounts, uh, Twitter just shut down. Yeah. So, you know, and so I don't really condone that. But the point is, if I was to bring these people on campus and just to get them to talk, no doubt a majority of us would know how full of shit they are. Yeah. And that's the whole point. That's the whole point. You, you can't expose yourself to these types of uh, ideas enough to be able to to mount a a defense or, or, or a, sort of a uh, a way of criticizing these people and these ideas if you don't allow them to speak in the first no, place. Well, then the you know, ideas, all you end up doing they just push them underground. Their ideas go. They don't change yeah, their minds. Yeah. I mean, the the best uh, disinfectant is light. So it's the best best exactly. off to have. Um, exactly. The conversations out, but uh, that's that's the um, the fright bat environment that we live in, where you it, you can't have conversations. It's just too dangerous to have conversations, which is just bizarre. The, the the funny thing is too that that, yeah. it, that they count women as an at risk group. What you might come want to come out with them that next time <laughs> is with women is why don't yeah. you present all the evidence that shows, for example, that women. Um, for example, live longer. They die of every type of unisex cancer less than men. They commit suicide less than men. They have better health outcomes across the board, and they get eighty percent of medical research yep. funding. Now, how are women? Yep. Women are a privilege. If anyone is an at risk, at -risk group, and if you talk about suicide or cancer, it's men. Um, you might want to bring that up. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Yeah, I will. I mean, I've, I'm still. Well, I've, I've, I got reelected again for 2017. <laughs> <laughs> for how long? So, but I, I half suspect that was because of the uh, low interest rate on becoming a counselor mm. on the, the student campus council yeah. in the first place. So, yeah. for them, it's either the option of of having no one sign up for the council or having someone that they can maybe kick out later on if he just you know speaks against no, them. Well, you're in there fighting so, the good fight because uh, they need someone to uh, monitor what these idiots get up to. Um, yeah, otherwise, yeah, they just, as right. they 
as they do, they just insinuate to themselves into power over decades and start, you know, in yeah. making laws. And that's how you end up, end up with a situation in Canada where it could actually be a, an offence to not yeah. use the right pronoun. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, some of these students are studying education, they're studying policing, mm. you know, so they're, they're getting into law and, uh, you know, these are fairly important parts of our society and well, they're already they will there. be... Educating them. I mean, you've got you've got those you've yeah, got they, those they teachers who are uh, going on strike at the moment, or have been going on strike, you know, about refugees. And these are, and they're getting kids in like you know, these are elementary school kids, these are primary school kids, six and seven years old, and teaching them about how what was it that yeah. our government hates refugees and all this kind of stuff, and the kids are going home and telling their oh, parents. Yeah. I mean, how how that's how that's not a sackable offence? I don't know. How is that your yeah, Andy. It's, it's insane. yeah, but it's insane. that's that's what the universities are producing. They're producing activists, not just someone who's interested in educating yeah. children. Activists. Yeah, I have to admit, it does seem like uh, a breeding ground for that type of ammunition. Mm. You know, so that's what maybe the, the university may may have had its day. Well, I hope not. I ho- I hope I'm the last line of defence, and uh, you know, by by me and and others hopefully inspired by uh, by other groups on campus to sort of hopefully push back against this type of insanity. So. Mm. Well, maybe, I mean, I, you know, I would never say the hard sciences, but a lot of the social sciences, I mean, they've really, they, they create nothing. They create nothing except fucking yeah, problems. They, they, they really fall, they really fall from grace, haven't they? Mm-hmm. I mean, I, and I'm studying psychology. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, well, you, yeah, let, let's, let's see, let's see what I can do, you know. I'll, I'm only one guy with a, a handful of others, uh, trailing along but um i'll see what i can do guys yep fingers crossed right mate well we might end it there then and um yep come we'll have you back on when you've got some more tales to tell and uh, maybe maybe we'll get no an update uh after you run your red bill screening if uh, see if it all goes off yeah. without a hitch right no worries you want to give people a shout out right. to where they can right. find you um social media yeah, so uh, it's as easy as finding us by Googling Skeptic Society, and we have Twitter, Facebook, we have a WordPress uh, website, um, but they're usually probably the easiest place to find us. We're, we have also got an account with uh, Meetup, mm-hmm. and uh, if you're not familiar with Meetup, it's basically just a, like a social gathering, social organization type of uh, page where groups gather up and do their thing and so we're on there mm. um that's that's just a backup so we can organize through meetup when we get if we get shut down again on campus so we can still organize <laughs> events so oh, yeah. but uh yeah we, we we pretty much come up on the first page of google so yeah skeptic society you uh, you, uh wsu mm-hmm. so look out for us well done thanks mate good one cheers always a pleasure